Back on the Sports Bank Zone and we are talking football, the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand to be specific. Now earlier on Thursday, Colombia and Morocco booked their spots in the round of 16, completing the bracket for the first knockout stage. Switzerland to play Spain, Japan versus Norway, that's a good one. Netherlands versus South Africa, Sweden, three times they have been third. They play the four-time champions, United States, England, Nigeria, the European champions involved there. Nigeria, one of the surprise packages of this tournament. Australia, Denmark, Colombia, Jamaica, that will be on Tuesday, the 8th of August, and France will play Morocco. Yeah, the Jamaica-Colombia encounter played on Tuesday, August 8. It will start at 3 a.m. Jamaica time. That's for Eastern Caribbean time. As the girls attempt to become the first Caribbean team to reach the quarterfinals of the FIFA Women's World Cup, let's remind you that they are yet to concede a goal this tournament, despite being drawn in a tough group, which included two top 10 ranked teams. However, some would say there is a bitter aftertaste the issue of support for the team. The international media has highlighted the team's funding woes, a constant rhetoric in trying to contextualize their achievement. In the US, People magazine ran the following headline, Jamaica beats Brazil to make round of 16 after needing a GoFundMe to afford trip to World Cup. The reggae girls leaned on multiple fundraisers to make the trip to this year's World Cup. CBS reported Jamaica's Riga girls overcome long odds to advance in Women's World Cup. Good Morning America said Jamaica advances to knockout in second World Cup appearance thanks to crowdfunding over in England, the world's most read daily. How Jamaica's reggae girls crowdfunded their way to the Women's World Cup ahead of sealing historic tie against fifth-ranked France. The Mirror had the following headline. Jamaica had a crowd fund to get to the Women's World Cup. Now they've made history. The Associated Press, AP, also covering the Reggae Girls campaign, reported Jamaica uses crowdfunding focus to hit Women's World Cup high point against France. Now, the Jamaica Football Federation has refuted these claims that the Reggae Girls are using money obtained from crowdfunding to take care of their World Cup campaign. The JFF says funding for the campaign came from FIFA and the government of Jamaica. In fact, on Wednesday, Jamaica Sports Minister Olivia Grange detailed what her ministry has done to assist the team. The government of Jamaica, through the Sports Foundation, Sports Development Foundation, we provide a monthly subvention of $3 million to the JFF, a total of $36 million, um, $36 million for the year. And this year, we also allocated an additional $20 million specifically for the Reggae Girls World Cup campaign. $10 million of which is to be paid directly to members of the squad under the ministry's Athletes Assistance Program. And as we speak, we have now received all their banking information, and over the next two days, we will be disbursing those funds to their account. Um, it will be in the amount of 2,500 US dollars to each, um, each player. And they are also covered under the Jamaica Athletes Insurance Plan, which covers health-related services. It covers injuries, overseas emergency services, and maternity, among other things. Yeah, so this is where we are and we're asking, is the negative press around the Reggae Girls' journey to this stage in any way potentially harmful to brand Jamaica? To announce this discussion, we're joined in studio by sports marketing consultant and head of Lee Marketing, Tanya Lee Perkins. Tanya Lee Perkins, it's a pleasure to have you on the Sports Mag Zone. First of all, how are you doing? Thank you, it's good. I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I'm very happy about how the girls have been performing at the Women's World Cup. Yeah. 
Let's talk about the headlines across the world and the negative press. How has it all caught you? Um, unfortunate, but necessary. Mm. I say necessary because we have to, it is a time when all eyes are on the reggae girls. It is their journey. It's their story to tell. This is what they have experienced on their journey. We know that a lot of sports across Jamaica continues to be underfunded. Women's sports globally continue to be underfunded. And so I think it's important that when you have an audience, you highlight some of those issues so that they can be addressed. Just listen to the minister, kudos to her for sending payments off to the girls. But as you note, that would have been something that's happening directly as a result of these headlines making the press. Mm. These girls had actually highlighted some of these issues six weeks ago before the start of the World Cup. So it isn't something which is specific to what's happening now. We have long documented literature, mm. articles, stories from both the senior men's and the senior women's team about exactly how many issues they have had. And they were very specific about what some of those issues are. Lack of preparation, lack of you know, planning. I wrote down some subpar planning, accommodation, transportation, training conditions, compensation, communication, nutrition, accessibility to proper resources. Ricardo, you know that I manage a couple reggae boys. These are issues that have also happened with the senior men's team. We've had instances where some of the players have not yet been paid for matches that they have played in 2022 on the senior men's team side. So I think it's a time for the Federation to look as to whether there is anything that they can tighten up with the administration. Mm. I was also listening to the minister yesterday and she said she had a conversation with Bonnie Shaw specific to how the message might be received and just being careful in how you communicate the message so as to not embarrass the country. Do you feel, and, and forget just about specifically the JFF now, that there is any possibility that because of how the message is coming across, that it could cause embarrassment, not just to the JFF, which it might be directed at, but to the country and the brand Jamaica. Ricardo, I must tell you, I'm very bothered by any notion which would suggest that these ladies are embarrassing the nation. Mm -hmm. They have brought a lot of honor to this country. They are speaking on issues that exist. We're almost shooting a messenger. Um, I'm not in the business of gaslighting the ladies in their explanation as to what their journey has looked like. This is a journey that we're all aware of. This is a team that has qualified for the World Cup in 2019. Yesterday, I had to go back to an article I wrote in the Gleena in 2019, talking about the long journey to success for the reggae girls. Mm -hmm. I wrote that article before they played Brazil. They are back playing Brazil at this World Cup, and when I read it, not much has changed in terms of support for the ladies. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to continue to look. Are we properly supporting our ladies? Yes. Is women's football properly supported? And I think it's something that all of us can look at. I think mm -hmm. it's something for the private sector to look at as well, because we have a case where the fourth ranked team in the world in netball had to also see crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at whether we can better support through sponsorships. I have athletes across many sports, even in motorsports, I have mm -hmm. athletes who seek funding through sponsorship. Mm -hmm. um, there is track and field as well. So a lot of our sports, we're doing very well on the world stage. They're actually bringing glory to brand Jamaica. Yeah. They're representing very well for brand Adidas when these girls go onto the pitch. What they have done, look at those teams that were in the round of 16. Yeah. None of them have a population as small as Jamaica. What they have done is momentous, mm -hmm. and we ought to have a look at whether they have been supported in the way that they should have been. Yeah, yeah. you speak about corporate Jamaica. Why is it that uh, corporate Jamaica and businesses by extension wait until the ladies have achieved glory to put their money there? Why is it? Because I've only been here for four years and to be honest, any sports team come to me to tell me that I'm willing to bet on a Jamaican team because of the glory that you all have achieved year after year. What's the issue? Well, it's twofold. We do have a lot of companies that have supported many teams, right, both male and female. Our women do very well in track and field. Our women are doing very well in football. Our netballers do well. Um, but there can always be more support because these programs continue to be woefully underfunded. 
So I think it is important that brands look at how they can better align before. We saw this in the last World Championships and in the Olympics where brands were jumping on board on the back of the glory of what the teams are doing. Yeah. And I think what they can do is to forward plan. And that's an important point I'd really love to make as somebody who seeks sponsorships for athletes right across the board, is I would say to corporate Jamaica, continue to put money behind these teams and don't wait until they're successful. Yeah. And I would say kudos to a KFC who signed a Bonnie Shaw in 2022, okay. and kudos to KFC who sponsored the Reggae Girls in yeah. 2023. And, you know, the hope is that we continue to funnel this back into developing the sport for all the little girls and boys that are coming up in football. Yeah. yeah. Quick one. So I've been thinking about this quite a lot. As far as a women's football culture is concerned, that does not and has not existed in this country. And the truth is probably in many other countries yes. as, as well. To develop the culture, it will clearly take time. Yes. Now, part of the culture is corporate entities, the fans, all buying into the product and believing that this is something they should get behind. And the truth is, in many cases, and it's not unique to women's sports, it will happen in men's sports as well. It is only when teams start winning, um, or it is usually at that point that you that have more of that support. That should we yes. be more patient with the corporate entities as the reggae girls Absolutely show not. the way. Absolutely not. This is a team that created history four years ago in 2019 when they qualified historically the first Caribbean team to qualify for the Women's World Cup. That was enough to say to them, we have a product, let's look at the girls. I believe that it's a long time in coming for us to support women's football at all levels. Um, when we look at the, the, the competitions and leagues that are happening, below the senior program, we see that there is woefully more that needs to be done. So at all levels, I looked, this earlier this year I sent a picture to Trudy Carter. Yes. And it was when Sportsmax used to host the primary school football championships. Yes. It was a competition for little boys. But you had sprinkling of girls who played that competition. Oh, nice. I found a photo of myself handing an award to Trudy Carter. Mm -hmm. And I remember that that composition, competition was sponsored by CB Chicken. Mm -hmm. And I want to say on air right now, kudos to CB Chicken for investing in primary school football at that level, because now you have a young footballer who is now a part of the senior women's team. Mm -hmm. and, and so at all levels, when you support, mm -hmm. you are supporting the development. So I would say you don't need to wait until they win. They don't have to win. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot to be said about the effort yes. that goes into sports. And so we should support that development because it will come back into a better Jamaica. Yeah, I'm so sorry that we don't have more time to have Maybe this you discussion. Can come but because I have more questions too. <laughs> you're always invited, Tanya Lee Perkins. You can stop by whenever you want. Is it because I'm wearing green and you're a color bar? Oh, that's a, that's your, <laughs> what you're wearing is beautiful, by the way. We're going to take a beautiful break of a back on the Sportsman Zone. <laughs>